Uh, welcome to the second lecture in this mini course on holomorphic Poisson structures. In the previous lecture, we were talking about some basic aspects of Poisson geometry, particularly the local structure of Poisson manifolds. And today I want to talk about a little bit more global piece of the story, which is the structure of a foliation present on any Poisson manifold. So let's begin uh, by recalling what happened last time. So remember that a Poisson bracket on a manifold X, which for us is a complex manifold or, or variety, Poisson bracket is a bilinear operation on functions, which is a Lie bracket, so it's skew symmetric and satisfies the Jacobi identity. And it's also a derivation in each argument. And we saw that you could equivalently encode that in the data of a tensor, pi, which is a holomorphic section of wedge two of the tangent bundle. And uh, the Jacobi identity corresponds to this uh, PDE for pi, which says that the scout in brackets with itself is equal to zero. So this is a nonlinear PDE satisfied by this tensor. So again, in, in local coordinates on this manifold, we can write the any bi vector as a sum of some components pi ij times the basis vectors del xi and del xj. And then the Poisson bracket is given in local coordinates by taking the derivatives of f and g with respect to the coordinates and skew symmetrizing as indicated by this wedge product. And then multiplying by the component functions, which are just the Poisson brackets of the coordinates x, i, x, j. And we saw at the end of the lecture, uh, this theorem of Weinstein called the splitting theorem, which says that um, if you have a point in a Poisson manifold, then you can always find a neighborhood of this point, which is isomorphic as a Poisson manifold to a product of two pieces. The first piece is what's called a non-degenerate or a symplectic structure. And in the transverse directions, you have a Poisson structure which vanishes at a point. So uh, the local expression in coordinates looks something like this. The non-degenerate part is given by a bivector which is constant in coordinates Q and P, they come in pairs. And then transverse to this non-degenerate structure of rank 2R, there's a Poisson structure which vanishes at this point and depends only on the remaining coordinates. So this is the, the local picture of a Poisson manifold. It looks locally like the product of a symplectic manifold and a Poisson structure which vanishes at a point but there's a more global picture uh, involving symplectic forms, which I now want to explain. So let's recall another piece of data, which we introduced last time, which is the so-called anchor map. This is the map which takes a one form and produces a vector field simply by contracting that one form into our bivector vector pi. And in particular, if ever we have a function f, then this function has a Hamiltonian vector field this vector field is uh, the vector field which corresponds to the derivation of bracketing with F or equivalently is obtained by applying this anchor map pi sharp to the differential of F. So you can ask the question, suppose I have two points in this manifold X, is it possible to join them by say a sequence of flows of Hamiltonian vector fields. So this defines an equivalence relation on X. We say that two points, little x and little x primed are equivalent, if and only if we can find a sequence of Hamiltonian flows that takes one to the other. So uh, this is an equivalence relation on X. And as a consequence, it partitions X into equivalence classes, which I'll call L sub J. And what I claim actually is that these equivalence classes, LJ, are actually submanifolds. They're immersed analytic submanifolds. And they fit together to give a possibly singular foliation of this manifold X. So to see this, um, let's think in the following way. So let's consider the subsheaf and the tangent sheaf, which is given as the span of all the Hamiltonian vector fields. 
I'll call this f sub pi. Equivalently, I could say that this is the image of the one forms in the vector fields under this anchor map by sharp. Now, if you think for a second, you realize that the Jacobi identity for the Poisson bracket is equivalent to the following statement. It says if I take the Hamiltonian vector field of F and the Hamiltonian vector field of G and I take their Lie bracket, in other words, the commutator of the corresponding derivations, then what I get is uh, the vector field, which is the Hamiltonian vector field of the Poisson bracket of f and g. This is really just exactly the Jacobi identity in disguise, but re-expressed in terms of the Hamiltonian vector fields instead of the bracket itself. So what this tells us is that this subsheaf f pi, which is spanned by the Hamiltonian vector fields, it must be an involutive subsheaf. So if I take the Lie bracket of any two sections, I get another section of f pi. So there's the Frobenius, or more generally the Stefan Sussman integrability theorem that says whenever you have an involutive subsheaf, it gives rise to a singular foliation. And now the point is that um, the leaves of the corresponding foliation are exactly these equivalence classes Lj because uh, the Hamiltonian vector fields, by definition, they span these spaces uh, Lj. Okay, so the orbits are exactly um, these equivalent classes. Uh, but a little bit more structure is present. So if I take a leaf of this foliation F pi, then uh, I can look at um, its tangent bundle, which again is the image of this uh, map pi sharp along L. And um, equivalently, I can say that the bivector is tangent to L, and moreover, it's non degenerate along L. So the fact that the image of the bivector is the entire tangent space of L, that's equivalent to saying is non-degenerate. And as a consequence, like we saw last time, if I ever have a Poisson bivector, which is non-degenerate, I can invert it to get a holomorphic two form, which is non-degenerate and closed. So it's a symplectic form. And the upshot is that if X pi is any Poisson variety, then I can look at a leaf of this foliation, and every leaf of this foliation will carry a canonical holomorphic symplectic form, which you get by inverting the bivector along this leaf. So this uh, foliation is given a name. It's called the symplectic foliation of the Poisson variety X pi. So every Poisson variety has a canonical decomposition into uh, leaves, which are symplectic. This is somehow um, perhaps the most uh, dominant feature of uh, the geometry of any Poisson manifold. So let's have some examples of this symplectic foliation. Well, the simplest example would be to consider the case where the Poisson bivector is identically zero. Well, in that case, all of the Hamiltonian vector fields are also zero, so they span the zero subspace in the tangent space. So the foliation is completely trivial, which means that every single point in X is its own symplectic leaf. So the equivalence classes are just the points of X. And each one of those is a zero-dimensional manifold. Well, there aren't very many two-forms on a zero-dimensional manifold. The only one is the zero two-form. So uh, each of these points is a symplectic leaf, and the symplectic form is just a zero. So not a very interesting situation. At the opposite extreme, we could consider the case of a non-degenerate Poisson manifold. So the bivector is non-degenerate. And then 
the image of the, or the span of the Hamiltonian vector fields will be the entire tangent space. So the foliation is just the whole tangent space. And as a consequence, the leaves of this foliation are simply the connected components of the manifold X. And they come equipped with a symplectic form, which is just the inverse of this non-degenerate two form. So these are the two extremes. We can have the zero Poisson structure. We can have something not degenerate. Then we could have something in between. So for instance, we looked last time at the case of a constant Poisson structure in local coordinates. So we consider CN with coordinates P, Q, and Z, where the bivector has the form, the sum del QI wedge del PI. We can always put a constant bivector into this form, as we saw. Uh, well, what is the foliation in this case? Well, uh, the image of this bivector is, is simply the span of these vector fields, del QI and del PI. And so the symplectic leaves are given by moving in the P direction and the Q direction, keeping Z constant. And the symplectic form on the leaf is just given by taking this uh, bivector, viewing it as a bivector, which depends only on P and Q, and inverting it. And when you do that, you'll get this uh, standard symplectic form in, in, two, in two, end dimen two R dimensions. So the picture is something like this. We have our space. Um, there are directions called P and Q, and there's the transverse direction called Z. The leaves go in the PQ direction, and then if we change Z, we move to a different leaf. Okay, for something which is uh, in between, uh, let's look at the case of a surface. So recall that if we have a smooth Poisson surface, then the bivector, it, well, it's a section of wedge two of the tangent bundle always, but on a surface, the wedge two of the tangent bundle is the maximal exterior power, so that's the determinant line bundle, which is called the anti-canonical line bundle, K inverse. And so the zero locus of the bivector is an anti-canonical divisor in X. Um, so here's a typical picture. We have a surface. This would be a picture of P2. And we have this curve Y, which is an anti-canonical divisor. Now, so what are the symplectic leaves? Well, um, away from Y, so on the complement of Y, this uh, Poisson structure is non-degenerate. And so I can invert it to get a symplectic two form. So we have an open dense symplectic leaf, which is uh, just the complement of this curve Y, which is shown in blue. And then on the other hand, uh, the individual points of Y are points where the Poisson structure vanishes identically. And so all the Hamiltonian vector fields vanish identically at every point on this curve which means that each individual point on the curve is its own symplectic leaf. And so as we saw, a zero dimensional symplectic leaf always has the zero two form. So that's the symplectic foliation. We have an open dense leaf, and then we have all the individual points on this curve Y. Another example that we looked at last time uh, was the case of Lie algebras. So if you have uh, the Lie algebra of some connected Lie group, finite dimensional, uh, then you can look at the dual space, the dual vector space, which is always a Poisson manifold. And remember that the Poisson bracket was defined in the following way. If I have uh, an element in the Lie algebra, I can view it as a linear function on the dual space X. And then, the operation of bracketing with F is just uh, given by extending the Lie bracket on the Lie algebra G. So in other words, uh, the Hamiltonian vector field of F is an extension to all functions of the adjoint action, which acts on the linear functions. So what this means dually, 
is that the symplectic leaves in the dual vector space are given by uh, the dual of the adjoint action. So that's the so-called co-adjoint action of the Lie group, connected Lie group G on its the dual of its Lie algebra. So this partitions the dual into orbits, and those are the symplectic leaves. And uh, as a consequence, all of those orbits carry a canonical symplectic form, which uh, is discovered several times and is often referred to as the kirillov kostan Sirial symplectic structure. Um, now notice that the adjoint action is a linear action on a vector space. So the origin is always preserved by this action, which means that the origin is always a zero dimensional leaf. But as soon as the Lie bracket is non-zero, there will be lots of leaves of higher dimension. Uh, so for instance, um, if we look at uh, the Lie algebra SL2C of traceless two by two matrices, well, remember we saw last time that uh, the dual vector space is a copy of C3 with standard coordinates E, F, and H corresponding to the standard basis of the SL2. And actually, we can identify this Lie algebra with its dual using the trace pairing. So given a matrix A, I can consider the linear functional on the space of matrices given by taking the trace of the product with A. This gives an isomorphism between G and G dual, which intertwines uh, the adjoint and coadjoint actions. So uh, the adjoint action uh, on the Lie algebra is just the relation of conjugacy of matrices. So if I have two non-zero matrices in SL2, then they will lie in the same leaf of this foliation, if and only if they're conjugate as matrices. But for two by two traceless matrices that are non-zero, that's just the same as requiring the determinants of these matrices are equal. So the leaves we can see in the following way. Um, well, first of all, the origin is always a zero dimensional leaf. And then uh, if I have a two by two matrix, the determinant is a quadratic function of the matrix entries. And so the uh, symplectic leaves are given by the level sets of the quadratic function defined by the determinant, which in the coordinates here is h squared plus four ef is equal to a constant. So on the right here, I have a picture of this. The origin is the point right in the middle, which is a zero dimensional symplectic leaf. And then all of these surfaces are the level sets of this function h squared plus four ef. Now, any of the non-zero level sets are smooth, but this one shown in red is the level set where the determinant is equal to zero that corresponds to the um, nilpotent two by two matrices. Um, and it corresponds to a symplectic leaf, uh, which whose closure is singular. So these blue leaves, those are all closed algebraic subvarieties in this uh, three-dimensional space. And then we have this leaf in the middle, which is in, in red. Its closure is a surface, which is an algebraic surface. Um, but the leaf itself is the complement of the origin in this closed subvariety. So I actually want to talk about a, a second foliation, which is present on any Poisson manifold. But to, to motivate that discussion, I want to talk a little bit about the different symmetries which are present on a Poisson manifold. So uh, one important fact is that the Poisson bivector is invariant under all Hamiltonian flows. So in other words, the Lie derivative of pi along any Hamiltonian vector field is always equal to zero. Uh, to see this is a can do it in various different ways. Let me give a way which uses the various identities for the Scouten bracket. So we want to calculate the Lie derivative of pi along a Hamiltonian vector field. Well, the Scouten bracket is this operation on polyvector fields, which extends the Lie bracket. So this Lie derivative is the same as the Scouten bracket of the vector field CF with the bivector field pi. Well, the Hamiltonian vector field CF is, by definition, the contraction of df into pi. Uh, 
And now there's another uh, identity for the Skouten bracket, which says that the contraction of df into pi is the Skouten bracket of the function f with the bivector pi up to a sign. And now the Skouten bracket is kind of like a Lie bracket. It satisfies a version of the Jacobi identity, but there are some signs involved. And so as a consequence, this expression here can be converted into two other terms, one where I have f bracketed with pi brackets pi, and the other, which looks uh, the same as this one, um, but the f has been moved over to the other side. But we know that uh, the Poisson structure satisfies this integrability condition that pi brackets pi is equal to zero. So this first term goes away. And what we're left with is minus the Lie derivative of pi along the Hamiltonian vector field of f. So this Lie derivative is equal to minus itself, which means that it must be equal to zero. So every Hamiltonian vector field is a symmetry of the Poisson structure. Uh, more generally, there's a definition. A vector field C is called a Poisson vector field if it satisfies this condition that the flow of pi along C is constant. So, so the Lie derivative is equal to zero. Now, um, notice that our calculation above was really a local calculation. It could have been done on an open set. So if I ever had a vector field C, which I could express on a small open set as a Hamiltonian, then that would tell us that it was a Poisson vector field. So we say that vector field is locally Hamiltonian if near any point I can represent it as a Hamiltonian vector field, even though there may not be a global function f for which it's the Hamiltonian. Now, actually, I claim that if the Poisson structure is non-degenerate, then these two things are equivalent. So um, every Poisson vector field is locally Hamiltonian. And to see this, we're going to uh, argue very simply as follows. So let's suppose that we're given a vector field. Well, the, by the non-degeneracy of the Poisson structure, this vector field must be equal to pi sharp of alpha, where alpha is a one form. And this one form is uniquely determined by xi because uh, the Poisson structure gives an isomorphism between one forms and vector fields. Now, a short computation along the lines of the one which we did above will show you that the Lie derivative of pi along C is equal to zero if and only if this one form alpha is closed. But then by the Poincare lemma, we know that any closed one form is locally the derivative of some function f. So at least locally, this vector field is Hamiltonian. So that's the proof. Okay, but there are actually many non-Hamiltonian symmetries once you get outside the uh, non-degenerate case. Uh, even in the non-degenerate case, there's an important distinction between vector fields being locally Hamiltonian and globally Hamiltonian. So again, if pi is non-degenerate, and I take a one form, a global one form, which is closed but not exact, then uh, as we saw a previous slide, this uh, vector field corresponding to alpha will be a Poisson vector field, but it will not be globally Hamiltonian because there's no function f such that alpha is equal to df. <clears throat> So locally Hamiltonian doesn't imply globally Hamiltonian, but also a vector field can be Poisson without being locally Hamiltonian, provided that the Poisson structure is degenerate. So for instance, um, let's take the three-dimensional space C3, and equipped with coordinates P, Q, and Z as usual, so that the Poisson bivector is del Q wedge del P. Uh, and then consider the translation in the z direction. Well, that's obviously a symmetry of this Poisson structure. So the vector field del z that generates that translation 
is a Poisson vector field. It's a symmetry. You can calculate directly that the Lie derivative of pi along this vector field is equal to zero. Now, the key point that I want to make is that this vector field is transverse to the symplectic leaves. Picture is something like this. Again, the symplectic foliation is given by moving in the PQ directions. But then I have this vector field C, which is in the Z direction, so it's pointing out of the symplectic leaves. But recall that the symplectic leaves were, by definition, uh, spanned by Hamiltonian vector fields. So there's no possible way that this vector field Xi could be written in terms of a Hamiltonian. It's not even in the image of the, the Hamiltonian vector fields inside the tangent space. So that's a Poisson vector field, which is Poisson, but not locally Hamiltonian. We can also have somewhat stranger behavior where we have a vector field that is locally Hamiltonian in some places, but not others. So that even happens in two dimensions. So let's consider x being c2 with the coordinates u and v. And let's consider a linear Poisson structure, pi, which is u del u wedge del v. So again, this Poisson structure is clearly invariant under translation in the v direction. So the vector field c equals del v is a Poisson vector field. And now you notice that if u is not equal to zero, then this vector field is actually the Hamiltonian vector field of the function log u, an easy calculation. But of course, the function log u is not holomorphic when u is equal to zero as a branch locus there. So what happens is that this vector field is not Hamiltonian when u is equal to zero. The picture is something like this. I have um, C2 and the Poisson structure vanishes when u is equal to zero. So that's this red line. Uh, on the other hand, this vector field C is non-vanishing. It moves in the vertical direction at constant speed. And so away from this red line, this uh, vector field is clearly tangent to the symplectic leaf because the symplectic leaf is the whole space. But along this red curve, which recall is just a bunch of uh, isolated symplectic leaves, so each point on this curve is individually a symplectic leaf, clearly this vector field is transverse to those leaves. So there's no possible way that the vector field could be Hamiltonian in the neighborhood of one of these points. Um, so this, uh, this example is actually an example of a a Poisson vector field, which is generated uh, in a certain way by a volume form instead of a uh, instead of a function. So let me explain now how instead of using a function, you can use a volume form to construct a symmetry. So let's suppose that we have a smooth uh, Poisson variety, say of dimension n, and we can generate symmetries of this Poisson variety using volume forms as follows. So let's suppose that I take mu, which is a top degree form that's non-vanishing on some open set. So it's a local section of the canonical bundle of X. It doesn't need to be a global section. We'll just consider the local situation. Well, whenever I have a volume form, it gives me an isomorphism between polyvectors and differential forms, which is simply by contracting a polyvector into this uh, volume form to get a differential form. Now that, of course, has the effect of reversing the degrees. So a form of degree k corresponds to a polyvector of degree n minus k. Now, the differential forms, they have a natural operator which acts on them, which is the Duram exterior differential. That's an operator of degree plus one. It increases the degree of a form by one. But this isomorphism now, I can use it to transport this operator D over to the polyvector fields. And in that way, I obtain an operator, which I'll call del or delta. And since this uh, isomorphism reverses the degrees, this operator delta has degree minus one. So it decreases the degree of a polyvector field. Now, of course, unlike the Duram differential, which was a totally canonical thing, depending only on X, 
this operator on the poly vectors depends in a clear way on the volume form mu. So it's not a canonical operator on the on the poly vector fields. You need to choose a volume form in order to produce this vector, this uh, this operator. And you can think of this operator as a kind of divergence operator. So, for particularly, if you were to take a vector field then operate by this operator, it would give you the divergence of a vector field, which is a function on x. So around uh, 1997, there were three papers where some form of this construction was described. Um, so if you start with a Poisson manifold, then you also take a, say, a local volume form, then you can apply this divergence operator to the Poisson bivector that lowers the degree by one. So it takes the bivector and produces a vector field, which I'll call zeta. And this vector field is given a name. It's called the modular vector field of the Poisson bivector with respect to the volume form mu. The uh, geometric interpretation of this, um, this vector field is maybe best expressed by explaining what it means for this vector field to be identically zero. So the modular vector field is equal to zero identically if and only if the volume form mu is invariant under the flow of all Hamiltonian vector fields. So the, the modular vector field somehow measures the failure of mu to be Hamiltonian invariant. So let me give some properties of this modular vector field, which is the divergence of the Poisson tensor with respect to the volume form mu. Well, first of all, let me say what it looks like in local coordinates. So if we write uh, local coordinates x, i, x, j, so the Poisson structure looks like this. And let's choose the volume form to just be the standard volume form in these coordinates. Then the modular vector field has a very nice expression, which makes it look a lot like the divergence of a vector field, which you learn in vector calculus. So what I am supposed to do is differentiate the components dPIj by dxi, uh, but now I have a vector field, so there's an additional component j, and that goes along with this uh, basis vector field, del xj. So I, I take these derivatives, and I multiply them by the coordinate vector field, and I add them all up, and that gives me the divergence of this Poisson tensor with respect to this coordinate volume form. So that's the modular vector field in this uh, particular coordinate system. And it's not too difficult to check that uh, the modular vector field is always a Poisson vector field. So it's a symmetry of pi. But again, I want to emphasize that it depends on the choice of a volume form mu. So you may ask, if I change the volume form mu, how does the modular vector field change? Well, uh, if I change the volume form, say, to some mu primed, which is a multiple of mu by some function g, then uh, the modular vector field changes to, sorry, this should be zeta prime, uh, which is um, given by taking zeta and subtracting the Hamiltonian vector field of the logarithm of g. So put differently, we could say that this modular vector field, although it depends on the choice of a volume form, is locally well-defined modulo Hamiltonian vector fields. So no matter which volume form I pick, um, the difference between two ways of writing it will always be a Hamiltonian. So because this vector field is locally well-defined modulo Hamiltonians, we can actually introduce a, a, another foliation of this Poisson manifold in the following way. So I'm going to introduce a, a subsheaf which sits in between this subsheaf F pi, which generated the symplectic foliation, and the whole tangent bundle. So what I'll do is uh, take the symplectic foliation, which remember is generated by the Hamiltonian vector fields, and I'll add to that uh, a multiple, any multiple of the modular vector field with respect to some volume form. Now this only makes sense in a local chart where I can find a volume form, but because the uh, modular vector field is well-defined modulo Hamiltonians, 
if I pass to some other volume form, this foliation actually doesn't change because the modular vector field will change to the new modular vector field plus some um, Hamiltonian. So that discrepancy lies in this uh, part f pi, which we've already included. And because the modular vector field is a Poisson vector field, it's quite easy to check that this new subsheaf is also involutive. So it's closed under the Lie bracket. And as a consequence, it gives us a foliation of x. So um, name for this foliation is the modular foliation of x of x pi. So what is the meaning of the leaves? Uh, well, locally, the leaves of L come in two flavors. Um, they're always going to be given by the orbits of symplectic leaves under the modular vector field zeta, but those come in two types. So um, if the dimension of this leaf is even, it corresponds to the case where I have a symplectic leaf to which this modular vector field is tangent. It means that this uh, extra generator, which I've tacked onto the foliation, actually already lies in f pi, so it doesn't give anything new. The opposite situation is when that vector field is transverse to the symplectic leaves. And so then what I get is an odd dimensional modular leaf, which corresponds to a one parameter family of symplectic leaves, which are related by this vector field zeta. So as an example, we can consider the case of a non-degenerate Poisson structure, which corresponds to a symplectic form. Well, in this case, the whole symplectic foliation is already the whole tangent bundle. Uh, so this modular foliation, which is sitting in between the two, must also be the whole tangent bundle. So again, the leaves of this modular foliation, they're the same as the symplectic leaves, they're just the entire connected components of X. And I just want to point out that in this case, there's an obvious Hamiltonian invariant volume form, which is given by um, the top exterior power of the symplectic form. This is Hamiltonian invariant because the Poisson structure is Hamiltonian invariant. So that means that if I use that particular volume form uh, to calculate the modular vector field, what I get is identically zero. So that makes it very clear that uh, you know, you're not adding anything new to this symplectic foliation. In a similar vein, we can consider the case where the Poisson structure has constant rank then as we saw as a consequence of the Weinstein splitting theorem, we see that locally uh, pi can always be written as a constant bivector, sum del qi wedge del pi. Well, remember the modular vector field is obtained by differentiating the components of the Poisson bivector in coordinates. So the components are constant, which means all those derivatives are zero. So the modular vector field is identically zero in these coordinates. And as a consequence, the symplectic foliation and the modular foliation are the same. So again, we haven't added anything new to the symplectic foliation. Another example would be consider the Lie algebra SL2C. Again, this is C3 with coordinates E, F, and H, and the Poisson bivector has this particular form. I'll leave it to you as an exercise to calculate the divergence of that Poisson tensor with respect to the standard coordinate volume form and find that the divergence is equal to zero. So again, the modular vector field is zero in these coordinates, which means that it doesn't add anything new to the foliation. So the modular leaves are again just the same as the symplectic leaves, which are the coadjoint orbits. So at this point, you're probably beginning to wonder whether there's any ever ever any difference between the modular foliation and the symplectic foliation. In these examples, there was no difference. So let's look again at the case of a surface. So um, again, we have a smooth connected Poisson surface X, and the zero locus of the bivector is an anti-canonical divisor. In local coordinates, I can always write the bivector as some function f of u and v times the coordinate bivector del u wedge del b. And if I compute the modular vector field in these coordinates, I get this expression, the derivative of f with respect to u times del v minus the opposite. So for instance, if the function f was the product u times v, I'd get a picture of something like this. 
the Poisson structure vanishes when u is equal to zero or v is equal to zero. So that's the two coordinate axes. And this vector field is v del v minus u del u, which looks like so. And so you see that um, away from the two red lines, of course, this uh, modular vector field is in the image of the Hamiltonians or the Poisson structure is symplectic. But then along the red lines, this uh, vector field is non-vanishing except at the origin where it vanishes. And so the picture of the modular foliation is like this. There's an open leaf, which is the blue part. Then I have the coordinate axes, which are one dimensional leaves corresponding to the flow of this uh, modular vector field. And then the origin itself is an individual leaf. So in general, looking at this expression in local coordinates, we can derive uh, foliation for any Poisson surface. So the modular leaves for a Poisson surface consist of uh, the open symplectic leaf, which remember was the complement of the anti-canonical divisor. And then there are a bunch of one-dimensional leaves, which corresponds to the connected components of the smooth locus of this anti-canonical divisor, like I've shown here. And finally, uh, the zero-dimensional leaves of this foliation are exactly the singular points in the curve. So this gives an example where um, the modular foliation is genuinely different from the symplectic foliation. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say about these foliations of uh, Poisson manifolds for today. And uh, in the next lecture, I'm gonna to start to talk about uh, some global aspects of the structure of these, uh, these Poisson varieties and their foliations.